So um, there aren't any test questions from 3.4, so the practice test now picks up with section 3.5. It asks me to find a function and describe the transformation, and hopefully this goes really easy. To find a function, each one of the functions that I'm creating are related to the function x squared. So I'm either going to see something in a parenthesis squared or an x squared plus or minus a number. For part A, to find the requested function, if the function value has a plus or minus sign in a parenthesis, that plus or minus sign needs to go inside a parenthesis next to the x with the x squared or the, the squared outside of it. So for my find each function, because the plus 3 in problem 20 3 is inside the parentheses that needs that plus 3 needs to go inside the parentheses and of course you should remember if you have something inside a parentheses plus moves it left minus moves it right for part B to describe the transformation because the plus 3 is inside the the parentheses, I'm just going to say it's going to move it left 3. For 24, since the plus 4 isn't in a parentheses, I shouldn't get an x plus 4 in a parentheses like I did in 23a. In 24, to find each function, because the plus 4 is after the function, it's going to go after the x squared. And in function notation, after the function, plus is going to move it up, minus is going to move it down. And that plus 4, because it's after, to describe the transformation, I'm just going to say it's going to move it up 4. The next problems are combinations other than um, there's the one new, 27 and 28 are new. So same thing. So 25a wants me to find a function. Wants me to find f of x minus 2. Since that's inside a parentheses, it needs to stay inside a parentheses. Minus 3, because that's not inside a parentheses, it goes after the function. So to find the function, the x minus 2 needs to be inside a parentheses. I still need the square, and I, the minus 3 will go after. To describe, minus inside parentheses go right, minus after the function goes down. So if I want to explain what this does in part b, the minus inside the parentheses is going to be right to the minus 3 afterwards is going to be down 3. Question 26, to do the 26a to find the function f of x plus 2 minus 3 the plus 2 is inside a parenthesis, so it needs to be inside a parenthesis that has an exponent of 2 because of the x squared. And then this minus 3 will go afterwards. To describe what happens here, plus inside the parenthesis moves it left, minus after the function moves it down. So to describe, it's going to go left 2 and then down 3. If that was a plus 3, it would be up 3. I don't know why I don't have any ups here, but they'll probably be on the in-class practice. For 27, part A, to find each function, if the negative's not inside the parentheses, it just goes in front of the function, not in a parenthesis. So this is going to be negative x squared. Negatives in front reflect over the x-axis. or turn it upside down. And so that's what this one is for 27b. We can say it flips it over or reflects it over the x-axis. For 28, because the negative x is inside the parentheses, I need to put that negative inside a parentheses with the square outside of it. That would be an acceptable answer for 28. Um, it turns out that 
negative x squared means negative x times negative x, and that's the same as x squared. I don't put reflection over the y-axis on the test, but both of these would be acceptable. The quantity negative x squared, which is equal to x squared, this you couldn't change to positive x squared. And for part b, negatives inside parentheses reflected over the y-axis. I never put reflect over the y-axis on the test. So I'm just going to say reflect over y-axis. Just a few more problems to do. One word problem, I always put this word problem on the test exactly in this form. So it talks about a campground owner with a thousand meters of fencing and there's a river and the campground owner is going to take his fencing and he's going to build three sides of a fence, but they're assuming the can't put a fence on the river bank itself. He's going to do something like this. He's going to build a rectangular uh, fenced in area um, and he wants to enclose the largest area possible. And rectangles have lengths and widths. I usually call the side parallel to the river a length and give it the letter L, and the sides perpendicular to the river I usually call W's. And the idea here in question A is that the campground owner is going to build one length and two widths, and they want to use up all 1,000 meters of fencing. So the equation that I'm going to start off with in part A of 29 is the one length that gets built plus the two widths equals a thousand meters of fencing. And it says here to write an equation for length, that implies to solve this for L. So I'm just going to minus 2w for both sides. And my answer to part A of this is going to be the length is minus 2w plus 1,000. That's all there is for part A. For part B, this whole shape is a rectangle. Even though we're only building three sides, part B wants me to find an equation for the area of this rectangle. And the area of any rectangle is its length times its width. So this rectangle is no different than any, even though we're building, um, we're fencing three sides and leaving one side unfenced, still the area that's fenced in is the length times the width. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to change the L to minus 2w plus 1,000. So I'm going to say the area is going to be the minus 2w plus 1,000 times w. And now I'm going to clear the parentheses by going minus 2w times w and doing 1,000 positive 1,000 times w. And that's going to give me the answer to part b. The area for this is going to be minus 2w squared. That's what you get when you take minus 2w times w, and then plus 1,000 w. And that's going to be the answer to part b. I'm just going to jump into doing the work for part c without a lot of explanation that I might have done in the videos. To find the optimal width, the width that will give me the maximum area, I need to use the formula negative b over 2a, which is the kind of part of the quadratic formula without the ugliness. So the value of the width that's going to give me the optimal area is, is gotten by using the formula negative b over 2a. And the a is the number in front of the squared term. The b is the number in front of the first power term. So the optimal area is going to be negative b, which is going to be negative 1,000, negative from the formula 1,000 up there from the b, over 2a, which is 2 times negative 2. This is going to give me negative 1,000 over negative 4. The two negatives cancel to be positives, and 1,000 over 4 is 250. When I go to answer, I'm going to say the width is, I'm going to tack the number 250 
and I probably need units since I have meters of fencing. I'm going to say this is 250 meters. And that's all I really need to do for C. I don't really need to dig into a graph. Part D wants me to find the length. I'm going to use the length formula. The length is minus 2w plus 1,000. I'm going to plug 250 in for the w. I can do this without my calculator, but you can use your calculator. This is going to give me negative 500 plus 1,000, and that's going to be 500. So my length is going to be 500 and I'll tack the units meters. There's a few ways to get part E, the maximum area. Probably this formula is the easiest to use. I'm going to use the formula area equals length times width. And in for the length, I'm going to plug the answer to part D, which is 500 meters. In for the width, I'm going to put the answer to part C, which is 250 meters. And I won't try to impress you. So 500 times 250, and I'll get the area is going to be 125,000 for the number. The units are going to be meters, but area is usually in square meters as opposed to lengths and widths that don't have exponents with the units. And that would seem reasonable for 29. So the word problem that you'll get on the test is just going to be exactly this problem, except that number 1,000 is going to be changed to a different amount of fencing. That was hyper fast, but um, I think I did enough, and we'll have plenty of time in class to kind of um, chip through another problem like this in case you didn't feel like this was good enough. So I'm going to pause the video here and make this a 12-minute review, which is really kind of amazing.